Tonight, we sit down with Governor Gina Raimondo for a year-end interview. The state's top executive is halfway through her first term. The two big topics from our sit-down, the disastrous rollout of a new state computer system and recent major job announcements. Eyewitness News reporter Tim White is here with the exclusive details. Well, you've heard the good news. Another major company is moving to Rhode Island, Johnson & Johnson, and developer Wexford is set to break ground on a project on the I-195 land. But those deals didn't come cheap. There's a cost to all that, though. $5 million plus in tax incentives for uh, 75 jobs uh, at Johnson & Johnson. You brought up Wexford. That's $32 million there. Tax incentives for Virgin Pulse, GE. Do you feel in any way that this game that states are playing is getting out of hand? Well, I don't like it. I'll be very honest with you. You know, I wish that every state would say, you know, we're going to stop doing this. But if I, but they're not. You know, you just saw Boston, the hottest market in America, GE. gave GE $130 million. So I want, I want my people to have a shot. You know, I, get, uh, I want Rhode Islanders to be in the game, to be in the ring, to have, a sh to have our fair shake at getting these jobs. Then there is UHIP. That's the massively expensive computer system for social service benefits built by private contractor Deloitte. The rollout has been flawed, to say the least. I asked the governor if anyone from her administration might lose their jobs for the glitchy launch. And by the way, it's not off the table. You know, we're not out of the woods yet. It's a transition. It's going to take another couple months until we're through the transition. I have a weekly meeting on it myself personally to check in on it. And if at any time I feel like I have to sue Deloitte, go after them for more money, fire somebody on my team, I will do that. As we've reported, out on the campaign trail, House Speaker Nicholas Mattiello pledged to eliminate the car tax. New at 6, I asked the governor if she plans on putting any car tax relief in next year's budget. Tim White, Eyewitness News. First, a year in review. We sat down with Governor Gina Raimondo today to take a look back at 2016. The Democrat is now halfway through her first term. New at 6 tonight, we ask her about the much despised car tax. Will she throw her support behind Speaker Nicholas Mattiello's campaign? Promise to get rid of it. Eyewitness News reporter Tim White is here now with the details. Mattiello has called for phasing out the car tax over the next five years at a potential cost to the state of more than $200 million. Look, nobody likes the car tax. I, no one would like to eliminate it more than me. Governor Gina Raimondo shares Speaker Nicholas Mattiello's hatred of the car tax, but she stopped short of committing to a car tax cut in her budget proposal next month. It is ripe for reform and to be cut. And so I look forward to working with the legislature to figuring out a way to do it. But as you say, it's $200 million uh, that we'd have to find out of an already tight budget, so we just have to do it right. Um, you know, look, Tim, it wasn't that long ago that we had the highest unemployment rate in America. We were doing painful cuts, and I don't want to go back to that. Speaking of Mattiello, he was noticeably absent at the governor's recent job announcements while Senate President Teresa Piva weed was by Raimondo's side. You know, some people, like us, are going to read into that and think that there might have been an erosion in the relationship between you and the speaker. What do you say? I think his priority is still creating jobs, and these are, you know, thousands of jobs for Rhode Islanders. So I... Uh, know that he's supportive of it and you know the good work that they did the legislature um, to provide the incentives enabled these so uh, was he invited oh of course yeah of course any idea why he wasn't there no but that's a question for his scheduler not for me so I did ask his spokesperson sent me back a one-line email that simply said the speaker had law office commitments Tim White eyewitness news